We released the beta um, this yesterday, actually, tag, tag beta release for the two repositories that are, are the main repositories for the Microsites project. Um, so if you go to GitHub, um, we now have two main pinned repositories, which are our distributions, local gov for the main public facing websites um, and microsites, which is another distribution built off a lot of the same uh, functionality that we have grown and known in, in the main local gov um, family of functionality, but specifically around uh, the microsites. So if you go to that repository, uh, there is a readme, which um, gives a bit more detail around the background of it and importantly, how to install it. Um, so I'm just going to run through a quick demo of installing it locally and setting up um, some of the uh, users and microsites just to show how quick it is. Um, and then we're going to move across to have a look at some of the demo sites that we've spent a bit more time building out with some content. Um, so if you are a developer or somebody interested in, in running it locally, um, there, there is the local gov microsites project repository, which is the, which is where you have instructions of, of how to install it locally, um, using a local development environment, um, which I have just done. So I won't actually run through that again, but essentially there's a few commands you run and it will spin up your, um, Docker containers, uh, using Lando and, uh, install the, 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 the installation profile. So one important po point to note is that it is designed to sit completely separately as a microsites installation with all your microsites separate from your main site installation, uh, which is probably going to be a bigger site and, and, um, have, have more performance and security, um, sensitivities. So we're, we're looking at sort of two, two distributions now. Um, so once you've got set up locally, um, uh, you will have, um, a control site, um, which is designed to be the site where you, as a microsites controller, there's a user called the controller, which is designed to be able to add users and microsites to the system. And then those users can log into the individual microsites to manage, um, manage their content and people. So the first thing to note is there's a slight quirk of the way that the permissions work. Um, and it's not recommended to log in and, and do stuff as user one, which is the kind of root user in Drupal. Um, so the first thing we do once we've created uh, the microsites system is to create a controller user and assign that user the controller role, um, or sorry, the microsites controller role. Um, anyone who's interested in the technicalities of that, do pipe up and we can, we can talk about it. But essentially, contrary to normal behavior, user one doesn't have special permissions in, in uh, groups. Um, so it's important, you know, unless you were to give them that, that controller role. So we create a user who is the controller, a login as that, that, that user, um, that user can then manage microsites and people. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just create a couple of users for our microsites. So, um, I'm going to create two admin users, one called admin one and one called admin two, and I'm going to create two microsites, um, and assign these users to those sites. Um, there is a role here, Microsites Trusted Editor, which is important for um, users of the microsites, but it actually gets assigned automatically when we when we create uh, when we assign users to the microsite. So I'm logged in as a controller. I go to the Microsites tab. There are no microsites yet. We're going to add a microsite. We're going to call it Site One. We're going to give it a host name. This is on my local, so I've got Lando set up in such a way that this domain will resolve to. The installation and then it will get picked up so it's local gov micro one dot lando dot site um some you can set the domain to be active or inactive um and that has created the microsite um and given us a bit of a, a, a dashboard of items within the microsite one thing to note we've got a, we've got a piece of default content which is cloned replicated into each microsite just to give people a, a, a starting point um, that also illustrates uh, a bunch of the paragraph components, um, including sort of accordion type things and media blocks and teasers and lots of nice images and sort of IA menu blocks and stuff. Um, and, but the first thing we're going to do is just assign with the controller at the moment, and we're still in the control site. So ideally you, you don't tend to want to manage any content from the control site. Um, the, we're looking for admin one. So we're going to uh, assign admin one. We've created the users, but we haven't assigned them to the site. So we're assigning admin one to site one and we're giving them the role of admin on that site. 
I'm also going to assign admin to the user for site two, but I'm not going to give them admin role just so I can demonstrate that as well in a minute. So now we've got one microsite. I'll just set up another one to, to demonstrate the separation of users and content. And takes a second and I'll assign admin two to that site as an admin. And I'll assign admin one just as not an admin. So anyone who's not an admin essentially has basic content management rights, um, but the admins also have control over look and feel of the site and adding and inviting new users to the site. So that's all the work done on the control site, set up two microsites with two users. Um, I'm now going to go to one of the, we're going to go to both of the, the microsites. If you I'm not sure of how well you can see, but I've gone to the domain localgovmicro1.lando.site. So this is no longer the control site. This is the, the microsite, site one. And I'm going to log in as admin one. And I can start to manage uh, manage my site. Um, I, what will I do? I'm just going to log out and just log in as admin. You can see I can see all of these tabs, including site design, site settings. We'll go through uh, some of that in, in a bit, and Maria will demonstrate some of the functionality we have there. I'm just going to log in as admin2, who was not an admin on this site, um, but is a member of the site. And so we see that they have a few fewer uh, items there. They can't manage people, but they can still manage content. So this is kind of like a, an editor, site editor on, on the site. So there are these two levels of, of, of uh, yeah, uh, permissions. Um, I'll just quickly demonstrate adding a piece of content. Um, my favorite reason has been the Microsoft's web form to create a contact form. Um, I suppose just briefly before I do, we have all of the, the um, well, many of the same content types that you have available on local Gov Drupal. Um, blogs are new, I think. Um, events directory channels and, and pages for directory listings, newsroom and news articles for news, uh, and the page, which is um, a slightly more content-rich page um, akin to that, which is on the, the subsites in the local gov subsites. But let's just create that web form because that is a piece of new functionality and everybody wanted a web form for their microsites. Um, one interesting point to note here is that the web form you can pre-create web forms. There's one created, which is a contact form. We can create a bunch of web forms and then have them available to insert into content um, on the microsite. Um, in this case, you can override what well, you need to set a submission email and a thank you note, uh, sort of thank you message um, for that web form. And this will create a piece of content on the site and embed the web form with those overrides. Um, so, oops, where did I go? So there's my piece of content. Um, in fact, I didn't give it a URL alias. I'll just set it as contact. And um, so, yeah, so now if I was to log out, um, we'd have that piece of content ready to ready to go on that page uh, with the form. Um, importantly, if we go and log in to uh, the second site, as admin do, um, we won't have that piece of content. We've only got our default piece of content, which has been created uh, by by the um, replication process at, at the initial. So each you know, content is separated in in between sites. Um, what else, Maria? Am I reaching the point where it's worth having a look at the demo sites? I think you were just about to show the different roles you had on both sites, but the eagle eye spotted that you created two admin roles on site two. So maybe show it on site one. Mm. Look at that. Yes. Um, so I guess as, but as the admin on site two, I could edit this, this user, um, edit this member and on my on site two as admin two. So if I, yeah, if I edit site one, admin one, I just remove the admin role. Um, and then, yeah, and then log out of there as admin two. Oops, go back in as admin one. 
then I will be able to do stuff, but not to the same extent. Um, so yeah, we have uh, we have content, we have menus, we have directory facets and taxonomies, um, or as as pieces of content items that we can create and manage within within each site. 